Hello everyone, my name is Arcana, and in today's video, I will be reviewing a 130 God Rolls Vacuum Cube Sword. I'll show you how to obtain the weapon, a good perk, and a hero build for the weapon, and I will also give one away, so definitely stay tuned for that, and roll the intro. Now, before we take a look at the weapon statistics, I would like to tell you some trivia about the weapon. This weapon used to be an event item that was available only the Survive the Holidays event. You could also get them at the Year 1 and 2 Birthday Llamas, but they were really rare and nobody really got them. Thankfully for those people, it was put back in the game after the 10.10 .10 update. And now everyone can just get the schematic through Llamas or researching the weapon from the collection book. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's talk about the weapon itself. The Vacuum Cube Sword is a... sword, <laughs> obviously. It's a fast swinging sword with a base damage of 1900, a critical rating of 15 and a critical damage of 50, an attack speed of 0.47 seconds, and finally an impact of uh, 117. Does it sound similar? Well, yeah, it's almost an exact copy of the slice and dice. You see, when this weapon set came out, it was at a weird era where all the event weapons were just reskins of already existing weapons. But they all had a twist into them. And this weapon is no different. You see, this weapon is a part of the Vacuum Cube weapon set. And just like every other weapon from that set, it only comes with nature. This can be annoying for some people, but not me. And the reason for that is that if I want to use the exact same weapon, but with a different element, I can just use the slice and dice instead. And another thing that makes this weapon unique is that it has a critical rating of 15 instead of a 10 which the slice and dice has. Now if you were to take a look at my weapon's perks, I obviously have nature and 20% damage on it because it's a legendary perk. I decided to go with a critical build for this weapon, a tier 1 crit build which basically means 1 critical rating and 1 critical damage and the reason I did that is because uh, it already had a base uh, critical rating of 15 and I thought that it would be a good idea to put uh, a critical rating and critical damage perk on it and I also maxed the perks out. Since my weapon causes affliction, I decided to go with damage to afflicted targets. And finally, the third perk is actually a pretty weird one. It's what I call a player buffing perk. What that means is that it's actually it's pretty self-explained. Instead of buffing the weapon, it buffs the player. But you can only choose one out of the five buffs you're presented with. I personally think that plus 40 armor is the best one out of the five. That's cause heavy attack efficiency is kind of a joke, life lates is also pretty useless. Durability can be useful if you're running low on materials. And the second best perk in my opinion is movement speed. I'll even show you how good the movement speed perk is later while reviewing the weapon. Ok, now that we're done with that, let's take a look at the hero build I'll be using. In my Dragon's Tooth review, someone commented that I wasn't using a very good build. Whoever commented that was totally right and that's why from now on I'll be using the best possible build I can come up with. The build I came up with is what a lot of people consider to be the best sword build in the game. For my commander character, I chose Assassin Sarah. But that's because of her perk. What it does is every time you hit an enemy with a melee weapon, she gets one stack of assassination and for every stack of assassination, her melee weapon damage is increased by 18%. You can get Assassin Sarah from Lamos or researching her through the collection book. For my support team, I decided to go with Assassin Ken. His perk makes it so that during Shadow Stance, he deals plus 25% sword damage. You can get him from Lamos, but he's really rare as he's a mythic hero. Also, you can get him from the collection book, but he's gonna cost way more than a legendary hero. For my second support hero, I decided to go with Pelia Luna. She adds 5.5% of your health to your melee weapon damage. She's an event hero that can no longer be obtained. For my third support hero, I decided to go with anti cattle Sarah. She gives 7.5 energy for every melee weapon elimination. She's also an event hero that can no longer be obtained. For my fourth support hero, I chose Deadly Blade Crash. She makes crit supply snare and affliction. You can get her from Lamas or the collection book. And for my last support hero, I decided to go with Survivalist Jonesy. He heals you for 39 base health for every elimination. You can get him from Lamas or the collection book and he's one of the best heroes in the game. Ok, now let's go test the weapon and see if it's any good. I'll be reviewing the weapon in a power level 124 mission as it is the go-to mission when reviewing a weapon. And I will be reviewing the weapon in a private match. 
Alright, so we're in the zone, and if you were to take a look at my backpack, you'll see that I have two vacuum tube swords. One of them has 40% armor, and the other one has 14% movement speed. To see the difference between the weapons, here's me running with the plus 40% uh, armor one. You see it's uh, not that bad actually. And here's me running with the one that has movement speed. Yeah, it's definitely quicker. Alright, so I just found a husky husk to test the weapon against. I'm gonna put my slow fill down. And let's see, okay. That was a 49,000 uh, hit. It was a critical hit. Um, gonna wait until the assassination buff uh, ends. Another another critical hit, 49,000. Gonna have to wait a little bit more. Let's see. That's good enough time. Here we go. Okay, 27,000. Uh, that wasn't a critical hit, that was a normal hit. Okay, now I wanna test the weapon against uh, loads of husks to show you how good the uh, uh, weapon is uh, against uh, multiple enemies. I just found some husks to test the weapon against, and oh my god, just deleted them. Yo, yeah, this this works pretty good actually. The it's great at taking out uh, multiple enemies. Heavy attacks also pretty good, pretty quick. Yeah, I'm using a parallel 130 uh, weapon in a 124 zone. That's that's pretty decent. I'm gonna finish it with a heavy attack. Okay, yeah, it's pretty cool. Here's a taker, I'm gonna try to kill him as quick as possible. Okay, got the first few kids. He's charging at me. Oh my god, I feel this so bad. Okay. Let's go. It does like multiple hits, but I mean yeah the damage per second this weapon uh, deals uh, is pretty good, especially for taking out missed monsters. The blasters here also obliterated. Yeah, this weapon's pretty amazing. Okay, here's another blaster, and for him is a smasher. <laughs> gets deleted. If you're using the exact same build that I'm using, or just something similar to it with the exact same perks, this weapon is amazing. It's it could be considered kind of overpowered. I'm literally playing on private, I'm, and I'm wrecking everything. Okay, I'm gonna kill the smaller husks, and then I'm gonna battle with uh, smasher. Okay, here we go. So it's like a uh, proper one one. It's gonna jump over him. Wait until he's exhausted. Let's go near him. Pretty far away. Okay, I'm just gonna cause as much damage as I can and I'm gonna backdrop at the last moment. Already caused him uh, to take damage from my affliction. Okay, he's taking a lot of damage right there from behind. <laughs> Do you see that coming? Yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage. I'm actually gonna have to backtrack a little. He's constantly taking damage from my affliction. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna take him out now, I think. Come on, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that was pretty good. After reviewing the vacuum tube sword, I've come to the conclusion that it's an amazing weapon. Its DPS is better than the average sword. Its crit potential is great. Its attack speed could be considered overpowered considering how much damage per swing the sword deals. And its impact is, actually it's pretty mediocre, but you get the point. This weapon is great, it's better than great. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have any downsides. For an example, if you're not playing as a ninja character, the sword can be slow at times. And if you're not using the right support heroes, the weapon will obviously misperform. But that could be said for every sword in the game. Overall, the vacuum tube sword is an amazing sword that if you own, you should definitely max out. Even compared to the slice and dice the sword is copying, it's still the superior one. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'll be doing a 106 vacuum tube sword giveaway. As always, in order to enter the giveaway, you need to be subscribed to the channel and comment your Fortnite game tag in the comment section down below. I'll show the winner of the giveaway in my next video. I will also show the winner of the Steamroller giveaway and the winner of the Plasmatron 9000 giveaway. Also, my next video won't be a web review. It will be a video where I talk about my channel and a new series of videos I'm planning for October. I'll even talk about the potential of adding a channel avatar. So yeah, you won't want to miss my next video. Which will come out very soon, like next week type of soon. Anyway, as always, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel to not miss out on my next videos. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel, we're currently at 63 subscribers, <laughs> you guys are amazing. If there was something that you didn't like about this video, then leave a comment in the comment section down below, I'm always open to criticism. If you want to ask me any questions, you can ask me in the comment section down below or on my Instagram, it's, uh, you can find my Instagram in my channel description. And as always, take care and be pure.